thinking about him, praying for him, and I felt like the Lord told me to tell him to back him up, to, that I said, Chris, when, whatever you need, turn around, I'm behind you, and I'll back you up in anything you need, anything you do, whatever and he said. So last week he said, take advantage of that. He said, I gotta be gone next week. Will you take care of Sunday? I said, yeah. I could never be a pastor, that's for sure. That's right. I have to do this every week. It's, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of time, and and you know, I I didn't get to watch Gunsmoke as much. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got prepared. You got settings that have watched Gunsmoke. And I I said, Lord, and you know, I do sometimes. I I relax at night. I sit down uh, in my chair at night and turn the TV in the bedroom on, and I think. Uh, when Gunsmoke comes on at 10.30, I'll, I'll watch that, and then I'll go to bed. And I thought, should you watch Gunsmoke? No, you should be reading your Bible. Bye. I'll do that tomorrow. It's just so When Gunsmoke is not. So, yeah. But, uh, yes, that's one of my favorites. I've probably seen them all, I don't know, at one time or another. Anyway, so I said, the Lord, the Lord has forgiven me that the few times I've chosen Gunsmoke over his presence. <laughs> we forgive you, too. But, uh, yeah. That James Arnes. <laughs> yeah, I've chosen him over over the over the uh, word of God. Uh, but uh, God has still blessed me and is still on my side. So I'm thankful that you know, just like we don't always do exactly as we should. There isn't a single person in this room that can say I do it all right all the time. Right. None of us can. But the nice thing is, just like Jennifer said, He forgives you, and the forgiveness is already there. You are living. I love that we did that song. Thank you, Brandy, that we live. This is the kingdom of heaven right here. So I just want to pray real quick before I get, get going here. Praise God. Lord, I'm just so grateful to get to be here with all these wonderful people that I love so much and that you love so much. And I'm just thankful that your word of God will shine in their hearts and give them courage and strength to live a new day for Jesus. Just as if they've never done it before, it'll all be brand new. Because you said, we are brand new creatures. Every day we're brand new. Thank you, Lord. And I thank you for that newness. Thank you for your spirit who will live in us. Build us up and teach us the things that we need to know to be like Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So today I, did, I told Chris, I said, I've been thinking about it tonight. Uh, Christianity 101. You know, there's so many basic things about Christianity that I never knew. When I, Tom and I got married, I wasn't a Christian. And Tom's mother sent us a Bible for Christmas. Uh, for the first year, I think, we were married, she sent us a Bible. And I thought, well, I guess you're supposed to read the Bible. Of course, I was raised Catholic and you don't read the Bible. I'd let them tell you what it says. And um, um, my dad used to she loved to argue with me about stuff like that. But um, you, you, don't, you don't learn anything. You know, you don't. And uh, so I... Trey, you're not Catholic, are you? Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't mean to kick your church. But, uh, but I, when I got that Bible, I would read and I thought, this thing's turned around. It's Old Testament and New Testament. Something's got to be new before it can get old. And this should be the other. This is, this is set up wrong. And, uh, and so that's the way I thought. But because I didn't know what it said. But I decided I would read it, and I would read all the time. Didn't have a clue what I was reading. Didn't know. Since I was not um, enlightened, because I was not born again, which is really where it's at, um, I, I couldn't figure it out what, what it was, even though I was hungry to know. And I was a person, I think I told you, as a teenager, even as a teenager, a young teenager, I never went to bed at night without praying. And I would get down on my knees beside my bed and pray every night, every night. And when I got up in the morning, I would pray, Lord, help me get through the day and help me to do what's right. And, you know, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't saved, but God took my prayer and, and saw the sincerity of my heart because I really did want to live a good life. And when kids around me were getting in trouble, somehow or other, I was not in that right place. I was not in that place. So... Kids got, we, we went to, we drove in the car one night, six of us, and they said, stop at the grocery. So they bought a couple dozen eggs and we were throwing eggs at the grocery store windows. They were. And I said, um, 
listen, I got a curfew tonight. I got to be home. My mom needs me. So I got up and dropped me off at my house, and they went down to throw an eggs, and they all got arrested. And But I was home, and uh, I got, got away from the different things, several things like that. One time they were doing some stuff that I missed the bus and didn't get there in time. And uh, so I didn't get to get mixed in with their foolishness, which I, I thought, you know, we do things just because the crowd's doing it sometimes when we really our heart isn't in all that. But, but uh, the Lord protected me and kept me away. So he, I think he set me apart for this life that I'm living today. And I'm just thankful for it, for what he's done in my life. And the things that I pray, you know, ask him that shall be given. Um, I, I faced one night a, a really bad, in, in the north they have electrical storms. And uh, it's to, you could just, these lightning flashes just flash practically over your head. It's almost as if you feel like you could reach up and grab one of them. But they flash and they're continually just going constantly. And it's it's very dangerous to be outside. But, um, but something was, I was in bed and one of those storms was going on. And the light fixture, my mother didn't like center bulbs. We had a thing there. And lightning started shooting out of that thing. And uh, she had, she liked, only liked lamps and diffused light. She didn't like those things up there. But, so we had a thing, a cover on it, but it started lightning, lightning started shooting out of that thing. And I said, Lord, make it stop. No, I just said, Lord, stop. That's how it was said. I said, I didn't say make it stop. I said, stop. And it stopped. And now everything clear. I mean, it was quiet outside and calm. And I thought, <laughs> but, you know, it scared me, but I realized God's listening to me. He really was listening to me and it, because I was afraid. And, he, and you know, we had my kid, Tom teases me all the time, my kids teach me, tease me all the time about if, if you want to get the weather right, call to me, ask her to pray because it, um, I, I just don't mind talking to the weather and it seems to co cooperate with me. Um, Braxton Reese had a birthday party outside one, I haven't got to my lesson yet. Braxton Reese had a birthday party outside a couple years back and uh, when you were still on Keith Street and, and the, uh, everything was outside, all the gifts were on tables of food and everything was outside. And Mike's house at that time was pretty little so we did a room for all of us. So uh, anyway, they said it's going to be time storm, we're going to be getting a lot of rain. And so we prayed, the time we prayed, we said, we hold back the storm in the name of Jesus. We hold back the rain. We refuse to allow you to rain on our party. And we went through the whole afternoon with not one drop, but at the end, they gathered everything, took everything, all the tables and dishes inside, and we got in our car, and as we pulled out of the driveway, the raindrops started hitting the windshield. Just that, and the Lord spared the whole afternoon, just for us, because we asked, but he'll do it just for you, because Amen. you asked. Because you're, you're just as special. I'm not that. I mean, I'm special to him. It's like Jim Davis said, God loves you, but I'm his favorite. And, um, you know, he had that t-shirt on when he was here one time. And, and I thought, that's the same thing. God loves you, all of you. But I'm his favorite. I would say, God, it's your baby talking again. I'm here to ask you to talk to you. And I've done that. I said, God, it's, I'm here. I know I'm your baby. And, you know, so, because I am special to him, and it's hard for us to think we're special, but you really are. I mean, just like what she said, he sent his son just to die, just for you. And, and if there had never been anybody else, if you were the only person on this earth, if Adam had, had been replaced by you, and he, you were the only one, still would have sent his son Amen. to die. True. To pay for everything, to give you a good, to, to let you, it isn't even so much as we think, well, he's forgiven all my sins. Some of you may be nice people, good people, but he loves you enough to cause you to live in the kingdom of God. I love that today. I said, oh God, all this music is right up, up, up my alley here today. But the things that I have to say is that we live in the kingdom of God where it all happens. All of it is happening in a, in a, in a um, dimension that we are not even looking, we can't even see. Right. You know, if, if, if guys, God would open our eyes, the eyes of our, of our real being, we would see angels in this room, walking around, yes, touching people, sitting yeah. beside people, whispering in their ears, 
telling them how much they're cared for. Yeah. You would see that. It'd be angels who are coming right through the walls and they, they become a part of our service here today because it, we're here to hear the word and they love it. They love yeah. the word of God themselves. So, you know, it's just a whole dimension, the kingdom of God. It's where you live. Don't live in this natural world where there's anger and hate and, and uh, you know, uh, just mess, just a mess. Um, and uh, struggling, lying, cheating, crying, brokenhearted. That's the world's kingdom. You don't live there. You live in a world of peace and love yeah. and comfort and mercy yeah. and truth and knowledge and vision. That's his world. That's where you live. So just live there. Make, make yourself. Realize. Make yourself. You're a part of that world. All right. So maybe I should start, I guess. Um, <laughs> Anyway, um, Matthew 4.25, something I probably have never read out loud before. But all of it is that the people of God, all these large crowds, large crowds. I mean, you know, he came. We, we, we need to see the, the, um, the, what was going on there. Here is a man that nobody knew, and the ones that did know him didn't trust him. They thought he was a weirdo. And... Uh, but he said the large crowds followed him from Galilee and Decapolis and Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. Twenty-six. Did I, did I give you twenty-six? That's it. Okay. Anyway. That's the end of the chapter. Okay, that's the, that's the end of the chapter. That's right. But all these people followed him because they wanted to hear something they'd never heard in their life before. That was all new, new stuff. Um, things that they that their religion of the day wasn't giving them. They were, the religion of the day was not giving them hope, but it was only it was giving them destruction and gloom and, and uh, destruction. Destruction. So these people were all looking for something from this man who was telling them good things. And was it all true? Do you think all this stuff that he's telling us is really true? Can it really be that can we really be healed? The scripture says that beyond that and he healed every one of them in the group that was there. And all those uh, big crowd of people, we don't know what the crowd, it might have been 25 people, but it might have been 325 yeah. people. But he healed every single one mm. of them while he was there, Good. while they were in his presence. So he was doing marvelous things, and then everybody was like expecting. The crowds got bigger and bigger and bigger as the word went out and said, you ought to see this man, he tells us everything. And he heals us when we're there just listening to it. But that's who he is, and that's who he still is today. Amen. Still is today. And, you know, we, we want to serve him, we want to love him, and we want to do what's right, we want to be like Jesus. But just every now and then, we make a mistake in our life. But because we make a mistake, he doesn't write us off. That's, so, that's what's so wonderful about him. He doesn't write off uh, us because we didn't do right. Because we, we had a wrong attitude, because right. we were angry and mean and deceptive and lying and, you know, and we do. Christians are still lying and, you know, uh, I've told a few myself that, <laughs> 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 said, you had a new pair of shoes? Oh, I don't know, these are things I had to do. I had them for two weeks. Lord, I'm so sorry. And, uh, and, and really, he, he does, he does love repentance, but sometimes we, we miss our chance to really be more good, you know, really be pure and hard and everything. We, we make a little mistake, but the nice thing is that it gives us the opportunity to uh, touch his grace Amen. and repent. Touch his grace. Amen. And as we repent of any little thing in your life, if it bothers you when you do it, just say, I'm sorry, Lord. It helped me to think, to make that real to me what I just did. So that is the kind of thing I would remember not to do again. I don't want to do that again. So um, anyway, and but I tell I tell people, and I've shared this with people. Don't agonize over your life. Who's lived a good life? Nobody. <laughs> but don't agonize over it. Say, oh, oh, here good. I am. I'm serving serving the Lord today. But I remember, you know, back when I was a teenager, I did this, I did that, and now, <clears throat> you know, I may you know tell him I'm not going to. Um, pronounce any sins that anybody did because you all know. You all know what you did. But he is forgiving 
and the scripture says that he removes our sin as far as the east is from the west. Amen. So there's nothing there anymore. It's totally, totally gone. Good, good. And the only reason you would think about it is because you think about it. He doesn't. And sometimes you have to, if you, you get and you say, Lord, do you remember when I, he said, no, I don't remember that. Yeah. I don't, and he doesn't. He doesn't remember that. He has himself, out of his own mouth, has said, I will not remember your sins. As your sins are removed. So they're, they're gone. So t when I said that in my prayer, today is a brand new day. It's a brand new Praise day. Praise God. So if you have never been born again, today you are again. Brand new. A brand new creature. You, um, all things, all the things that are good is love and kindness and mercy and peace and truth and just fun, fun stuff. You know that we can have a life that's just fun, laughing and caring. And you know, we, uh, those of you who know who watch Facebook, my family plays um, Yahtzee on, on Thursday nights. Every Thursday night we play it. Sometimes there's four or five of us, and sometimes there's 10 or 12 of us, and just the grandkids came all summer and, and uh, while they were away from college and home from college. And we just had the best time, and we laughed, and, and we eat and mess up, and we just have the best time. So and it's fun. We don't ever have to walk away from that place and say, oh man, I should have done that. That's not something I should have done. Where you might have walked away from some um, casino or something and said, oh, I don't know, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have spent all that money there, you know, I, should, I shouldn't have spent my, my red money there at the casino, stuff like that, you know, we don't ever have to say anything like that, because it's all good, it's all good. Um, but that God wants you to have fun, and have, that's living in the kingdom. It's fun, it shouldn't Amen. be dreary and dull. This is the it shouldn't be uh, rules and um, feeling like you're, you're not... Uh, um, that, that you're just not measuring up to his righteousness. It shouldn't be that way. You're, you're as righteous as he is. I told Joanna one time, she was a young girl, she was struggling. She had, they thought she had cancer in her, bone cancer in her leg. And turned out she just had a, um, a bone, bone that had been misplaced um, through an accident. And, um, and I was sitting on the floor talking to her, we were praying. And I said, Joanna, I said that, Bible says that you are just as righteous as Jesus is, as pure and good as he is. Lord. She said, oh no, mom, not me. I, she said, that can't be. And I said, it is, it is. What do you, she said, I can be as righteous as he is. I, she, I said, you already are. Yeah. She, could, she said, that is just so, it's unbelievable is what it is. I can't, how can I be as good and pure and right as he is, you know? It's unbelievable. But it's true anyway. So, you know, and that when you can when you can put yourself in that place of um, I'm I'm clean, I'm pure, I'm I'm righteous, I'm I'm every every bit of good that he is, so am I. Because his life is in him. And that's you when you give your life to him, that's when you become just like him. And you find yourself doing things, you know, I would I would find myself doing things right instead of doing things wrong. But you know, I can't pat myself on the back and say, you're doing a good job in this Christian life, Judy. I had to say, thank you, Jesus, for doing it right within me. Because I see now it can be done. Good. You know, I, I used to really be, could spin a yarn pretty good and when I was young. <laughs> and I told my mother some really fantastic stories. <laughs> and about why I was so late, and why I didn't get this done, and all of it. But, when, when I learned to do it after I got saved and I was able to do, tell the truth, I was so excited about that because I was given to falsehood. It was me. That's who I was. And, and I didn't even trust myself. But, um, so how did my mom trust me? So, but uh, but I, I learned to trust the Lord and He did it right in me. And I said the things that were true. And eventually, uh, I remember my mother said, I was grown just about, you know, about married, and she's, she, I remember her telling one of her sisters, she said, you know, if I need to know the truth, I'll ask Ju Judy, because she said she has, she'll tell me the truth. And I thought, mm, I don't really know me that well, mother. <laughs> but later on in life, the Lord changed my life, and, 
Amen. So I was able to be a truthful person. And now if I tell a lie, and we all do, sometimes I'll let things slip, and I'll say things that, you know, instead of seven, I'll say it was eight, and, you know, something, just something little but not true. And, and I can say, God, I didn't mean to do that, I'm sorry. And so he lets me be free again, right again. And that's, that's what it's like. Um, so I'm, I'm talking about holiness and uh, to have, let's see, what do I got here now? Um, as, oh, I, this is so good. As you grow in the knowledge of the Lord, and we do that by coming to church, right. by fellowshipping, by reading His Word. If you don't read His Word, honey, you are missing it. There's so many times when I pick up the Bible and just read, and I think, this is so wonderful. That this can, that I, I wrote in the front of one of my Bibles, one of them that I lost in the fire, that said, within these pages I have found the heart of my Father. Amen. Amen. And I wrote that, That's that good. was my own uh, thought at the time, because sure enough, when I would read in there, I would see how good he was. Yes. And I would see how good he was to the whole world, not just to me, but he was good to people. And, and he, uh, he always set things up, he was always fair. And um, so I, I found that, but I said, as you read his word, and you you will become more like Jesus. And as you become more like Jesus, people will be attracted to you. Um, I, I never, I remember one time, at Lexington, <laughs> at Lexington, there was a, um, one of those big garbage, things you could pile all your garbage in it. He would park there every Tuesday night. And, um, so Tuesday night, we would take that bags of trash down there. And we've been going there for a few months. I told Tom one night, I said, you know that guy that takes care of things? And I said, I said, he's a Christian. And Tom said, how do you know? Will you talk to him? I said, no. I said, but there's something about him. There's a radiant uh, energy about him that tells you he's a Christian. Tom said, I'm going to ask him. So the next time we came, he said, my wife thinks you're a Christian. He said, praise the Lord. <laughs> but he was. And you know how? It was just because his personality, he was not just helpful. And he helped everybody do anything they needed there. He wasn't just helpful. There was just something about him that was real and sweet and peaceful. And sure, the man was a Christian. And he said, but I think he was so excited because he recognized it. Yeah. And... I think he was so happy that he really had put out that image um, of Jesus. So but, but people will do that to you too. You know, have you ever met people that just say, there's something about them, you know, they're just something that I, uh, people that you you just met but yet you feel like you've known them forever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's because that spirit has been right. alive in the Lord forever right. is in them. And so you're feeling that because the same spirit that they have in them is in with, with you and you have this connection. So if somebody, so you always look for that, um, for that to happen in your life, and it'll happen as you get to be more and more, follow the word of God, change things, let things change in your life. You will be more like Jesus. Um, let's go to what? Um, I want to talk about forgiveness because this is one of the things of Christianity that when we first get saved. We have to forgive people. God forgives us, we have to forgive. It isn't easy. There have been times in my life when I had a real problem with some people. A real problem. Right. In that I could, in that I could, yeah. Yeah. And I would wake up in the morning and hope I wouldn't see them that day or go to bed that night and fly out the day so or so. Because I was, yeah because I was so angry with that person and I felt like any little thing they did, it wasn't Tom. <laughs> I have to say, he's honestly been fair with me my whole life. But, um, but I felt like that person and I had to deal with it a little bit, but um, I, I always felt like if they did any little thing, I just blew it up into a big thing that I made them worse than what they actually were. And over the years, we eventually became friends and, and uh, uh, we're able to just connect again with each other, which is wonderful, wonderful. Uh, and they were Christian, and I was Christian, and I had this hard feelings in my heart towards them. But you know, when the scripture says, and we're in Matthew 6, 14, Matthew 6, 14.
been accused of having my career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a six, yeah, Matthew 6, 14, yeah. It says, if you forgive others for their transgressions, then your heavenly Father will so also also forgive you. But you know, there's if you if you read between the lines on that scripture, it says if you don't forgive, then neither will your heavenly Father forgive you. So. Uh, and, he, and he says that in, in another place, which I didn't put down, but um, but you can see that in that scripture. If you if you forgive, if you don't forgive, there is the alternate. You don't want to forgive you. So it's important to give forgive people for stuff that they may know that they've done against you, or they may not know that they have True. offended you. And you know, just because you were offended didn't mean they knew that they offended you. So sometimes you just have to overlook. And it isn't always easy to just overlook that and to be at peace. And I know if, if I am, uh, and we all get offended. We get offended all the time. I got offended just the other day by somebody. And and I have I have to practice what I say to you. And I gotta do I gotta do this too. Just because I can tell you that doesn't mean I don't have to do it. <laughs> I gotta do it too, and I had to. And it wasn't easy. It was not. It was a business thing, and I. I, I struggled with it for a few hours before I could actually give it up. But um, in, in Matthew 7, 12, this is something every one of us should have, a part of our life. Um, it, we've heard it all our life, but it should also be a part of our life, and you need to take time to think about it. In Matthew 7, 12, it says, In everything, therefore, treat people the same way that you want them to treat you. This is the law and the prophets. The same way that you want people to, the things that you would like the people to do for you, do them. And it, sometimes it's, it just it requires a, a, a decision on your part to do something, to change something. One, I remember last year, I made a decision that whenever anybody I met, I would always do my best to give them a compliment. So, and, and it got to be such a habit that I still do it today. But I had to make myself do it. And I made myself tell people, uh, I said to a lady the other day, she had red hair, beautiful hair. I said, your hair is so beautiful. And she, and she it's like I slapped her. She didn't know what to think of, you know. And because sometimes people aren't used to getting compliments or letting people uh, recognize them for certain things. And I said, you know, that, that blouse is so pretty. The colors in it are so wonderful. They just look great on you. Oh, I tell her, and service people, I'll say, next time I come back in the store, I'm going to make sure you wait on me because you're so fast and you're so, uh, you know, you, you do such a great job. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, you know, they don't know what to think about people who give them compliments because we're not used to give. We're used to taking away, not giving. It's true. It's the whole world of taking away and, and, and getting, um, see, see who. By saying what we think, which may not be pure, true, and good, and, and that, that gets us into trouble. But it also hurts people. Jesus would hurt people that way, so neither will you. Right. Don't hurt people. I say things that are, that are ugly. And, um, so that, that's, that's important. That's part of, I think, who, who I try to let the Lord work in me. I want to, be, I want to show forth your personality, Lord, and your love to people, and let them know how much you care. I uh, carry for it. So um, we're going to move on to grace, which is uh, when we started hearing the word of grace. I think in 2003, when John Alley was here from, from uh, Australia, uh, such a wonderful man, and he lives grace. I said when he lived, he was in our house on two occasions that he stayed with us. One time he was by himself. Another time he came with his wife and five of his ten children. And um, he got, uh, um, and they stayed with us. Of course, the house was big at that time, and we had plenty of room for everybody. And, um, but I said, told Tom, I said, this must be what it's like for the disciples to walk with Jesus because of the, wherever he was, there was peace. He was the kindest, but yet the most knowledgeable person I ever met. And he knew God so personally, 
I could lose his next door neighbor or something, or his brother-in-law or something. He was just new God that way. And he would talk about it in that way, that, that he would, would sit and, and talk to the Lord just like you and I would sit together and have a cup of coffee and talk. He wasn't somebody way off somewhere in another dimension. He was God right here. So he, and, he, and I said, I remember um, the children were getting ready to eat breakfast and they ate cereal with um, yogurt. They didn't put milk in their cereal, they put yogurt and stirred their yogurt into their cereal and ate it. That's where they lived. Well, the little girl got up to go. The boy got up to go do something in the kitchen, get something, put something in the trash, I think. And the little girl jumped in his chair. And he said, Hannah, you're in my chair. She said, I'm here now. I get it. Something like that, you know, she was getting real smart. But she didn't realize her father had come down the stairs. It was just around the corner. And he said, I guess he heard that conversation. He said, Hannah, man, she jumped out of that chair and was gone in a flash. And all he said was, Hannah, you, you, this, this gal's going to have pain. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just, but it was done in such a. I mean, he never did it as far as commanding or anything like that. He just said, "Hey," and you know. So I thought that, that must be what it was like to be around Jesus when he was walking on the earth to have him in our house. He was there for four or five days. He came from Australia and came to Indiana and prayed for me when I had cancer, and the Lord healed me. Yeah, um, yeah, wonderful, sweet man, and. Uh, but anyway, I'm worried. Talk about grace. Grace is, is um, something that you don't deserve. That's right. You didn't earn it. Right. You don't get to earn it, but he gave it to you. Amen. It's yours. So glad to have it. It belongs to you. And grace is him erasing everything you've done, making your life a, a point where anything in this world belongs to you. That's what grace is. Anything here that you need, it's yours. He's given that to you. It's already handed to you on a platter. Just take what you want out of it. You know, if you need if you need some wisdom, it's there. If you need some joy, it's there. If you need some money, it's there. It's all there. But grace has brought it to you. You didn't you didn't do anything except turn your life over to Jesus Christ and let Him be your Lord, which was so wonderful anyway. I mean, if that just if we just had that, that would be enough. But yet we get His grace, which produces us everything that we need for life and godliness. So if you're missing a little something part of your personality that needs to be more godly, you got it. It's there. He's already passed it to you. So I think my time is about it. I think I can't see that clock. But anyway, um, I think uh, one of the things I want to say is that uh, regard one another as more important than you. I think I'm going to close with that. Regard everybody as they be more important than you. Their needs are above yours. Their time that they need is above yours. And that's really hard to do in this day and time. We're all so pulled in so many different directions. I know we've had a crazy busy week ourselves this week. And, and uh, we need to do some things. But, um, but it's if, if we will live our life like he did, he gave his life for us. If we will live our life by giving that this life by giving our lives to other people. We will not only be more successful, but we'll show forth Jesus Christ that his word, his life, and his power will be available in this world for anybody to, to receive. So.